This video is sponsored by Mr. Prep prescribed online and delivered to your door. Ugh, what's a girl gotta do to get a yabba dabba daddy around here? Hi, Ugly. It's me, everyone's favorite mode of transportation, Bus Queen. So hop on in, cause today we'll be reviewing episode 9 of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 15, The Crystal Ball. In which our queens were challenged to serve three looks. First, start your engines, a look inspired by the iconic RuPaul racer outfit. Next, a look inspired by each queen's favorite ball of yester seasons past. And finally, the look they made there, crystallized eleganza. Crystal sequins and stones, oh my. And I suppose it's also worth highlighting, this was the franchise's 200th episode. So naturally, RuPaul celebrated the occasion with some cake and candy. What a treat. I actually saw a cornbread tweet that RuPaul lip syncs like the twins, and I can't unsee it. Anywho, in today's or we'll be scoring each of the 27 looks from our nine remaining queens out of five hot flames, taking a look at what Spice said about her controversial elimination, and talking candidly about how you can get prep delivered right to your door for free in discreet packaging from today's video sponsor, Mr. Here's how it works. Click the link in the description of my video to visit heymister.com and complete your confidential and judgment-free health review in just minutes. Next, you'll receive an at-home testing kit. No needles and no doctor's visit required. Required. Complete it and send it back. Then a licensed physician will take a look at everything and prescribe prep if appropriate. And if prescribed, Mr. will work with your health insurance company and or your patient assistance programs to make sure you can get prep completely free. But insurance or not, they've got you covered. There will be no out of pocket cost to get your prep. Plus it'll be delivered right to your door in discreet packaging and refill every month free of charge. In fact, it's so easy, even a drag queen can do it. <laughs> so what are you waiting for? Get prep for spring with Mr. by clicking the link in the description of this video. Now let's take a gander into my crystal ball. First up, and in the order they appeared in their first looks on the runway tonight, Mistress Isabel Brooks. Her racing suit is definitely the most true to ruse of the cast tonight, with the twist being, oh y'all wanted a twist, eh? That she's got catchphrases from plus size queens of prior seasons patched onto her racing suit. She's got proportionizing from Eureka, keep those nuts away from my face from Latrice, and even is you hungry from Cornbread's entrance line on season 14. And y'all probably know by now, I'm not the biggest fan of words on runway looks because you don't really get time to appreciate them. And it just feels like I've got to do all this extra work to really enjoy the garment to its fullest. But I am a generous queen and I do make exceptions. And I think the catchphrases here do work because patches on her racing suit being catchphrases of prior plus size queens is both a celebration of who she is and a fun little trip down memory lane that fits into the theme of this episode of looking back at where Drag Race has been and looking at where it's going. My final verdict is sometimes more is more. This look is hot. And while we're talking about more is more, oh my god. Her favorite ball look, the ball, ball, is completely made of deconstructed beach balls and also really visually exciting and scary a little bit. It's very Lee Bowery Club Kid Face Kini-esque. It was Lee Bowery girl. And my god, I'm not a seamstress, but I don't even want to think about how hard it would be to construct a look out of that plasticky PVC beach ball material. Anyways, enough hot air, this look is hot. And finally for her crystallized look, mom. This is gorgeous, Gorgina Gagatrandra. But let's first acknowledge and talk about the length of the gown. It's perfect. And that I think is something so rare for someone to get right on a design challenge. Another really interesting thing about the gown she's created is she's got crystals, heavy ones, on the bottom of the train of her dress that keep the structure on the runway as she walks down it. The final effect is we get Mistress levitating as if she were walking on water down the runway, looking like the ethereal drag goddess she is. The only reason I can fathom she didn't get more praise for this from the judging panel is because she was subtle in her approach for this final runway and typically looking back at prior balls, the more wild, conceptually speaking, look kind of gets the win. And maybe they just wanted another layer besides glamour, but the category was crystallized eleganza. You want a gown? She'll give you a gown. Y'all can't tell me she left one single crumb on that runway. Not one. Not one. This look is and next up, shake the dice and trot the spice. So my drag race senses were tingling from the beginning of this episode when we see Carson and Rue go through the workroom and single out Spice to tell her that her looks on prior runways have lacks personality and that a lot of her silhouettes have been the same. And I was like, oh, they're about to Derek Barry, my girl, aren't they? 
Sure were. Cause sure she has used the same silhouette or outfit cut several times on the runway. But so did Bianca Del Rio, who won RuPaul's Drag Race on season six, might I remind you. And it's not like her looks have been unpolished by any stretch of the imagination. She actually had so much personality that they had to ask her to stop trotting on the runway. And I think of this entire cast, maybe of the entire franchise, Sugar and Spice have one of the most easily and instantly recognizable styles. I mean, really though, I'd say they have a pretty good understanding of the personality of their drag. A fair critique might have been, we want to see more classic drag glamour from you? Or bigger concepts, perhaps, but lacking personality? I don't know about that. Anyways, let's take a look at what our personality free brat style did on the runway tonight. Her first look, Start Your Engines, one of my favorites of the evening. She's giving me diners, drive-ins, and drag. Guy Fieri shaking in his boots at the sequel where the twins take over his job. That'd be a great show. And I love this look because it is so true to Spice's drag personality and also referential to the like 50s diner era while also giving the nod to RuPaul. When I first saw her hit the stage, I immediately thought of the big boy mascot from like that burger chain. And she has to her credit really dragged up this look. There are boot covers, rhinestones, a cinched and pinched silhouette, and of course, great makeup and hair. And in fact, I think I'm ready to get my oil changed. This look is hot. And her favorite ball, the ball ball. She hair is covered in those like arts and crafts pom-pom things and varying shades of purple with stockings that are ripped and some like ravey moon boots. And I love all the cutouts that make this look really visually interesting and how she's integrated the pom-poms into her hair. <laughs> Smells like Elmer's glue and teen spirit. This look is hot. And in her final look, she is the boom boom disco ball. It looks like she has created this look by smashing up a disco ball and taking all the little mirrored square pieces to create the crop top. And I like conceptually speaking that a disco ball really fits into the personality of her party girl drag. Unfortunately though, as we've heard from Spice, she's not the seamstress of the twin pair, which would explain some of like the technical issues with her outfit, like the bottom part of the skirt hem being hot glued instead of sewn. Some of the straps on the side slits kind of getting a little too loose and maybe falling off a bit, and then the top part not really fitting well enough to hug her body and her needing to pull it up. And the final effect of all the strange cuts on the different outfit pieces and hair that was a little too long here is she looks about four feet tall on the runway. Helps in part that this was also like the first time I think on the runway that she didn't wear those crazy eight inch platform shoes. So I think props to you mama for listening to the judges and trying something new. This look just wasn't a party. So I'm gonna give it a and next up, our queen of unshakable confidence, Lux Noir London. Her Starter Engines look is the first departure from Rue's red racing suit that we see on the runway tonight. She went for the pink one instead. You know, the one from the show transitions when RuPaul's like waving the flag and cackling. <laughs> And I'll say this is not my favorite Lux look. I like the color blocking of the pink and the white elements on this outfit. But then again, I kind of don't because with all of the squares and hard lines in the crop top and the bottom part of the look, she's created something very visually disrupting. Like there's no feng shui, if you can say that about garments uh, in this look. Plus with all the visual clutter around her shoulders and neck and pony, she's made herself kind of look like a little bobblehead. I'd say like with a little editing, this look would be cute for a meet and greet, but for the runway in this category tonight, it's not doing a lot for me. I'm gonna give it a before her favorite ball look, an homage to the hair ball. Oh my God. She says she's pinched, she can barely breathe and she is giving us some 90s supermodel tees, which is inspired by a look from one of Sierra Mugler's collections from the 90s. May he rest in peace, but that was immediately recognizable to me. She looks so high fashion elevated and like this is the Lux that I know and love on the runway. Holy shit. This look is uh, it's her. What was the hair on this look? 40 inches. Irene. Anyone seen Irene? No? Okay. But then for her final crystallized look, I was a little underwhelmed. She's created this like melted plastic or glue lattice work to construct the pieces of this look. I'm getting Disney's Frozen vibes mixed with like Tinkerbell. And I'll say the idea and concept of this look are very cool. But something about the proportions feel off to me. I want bigger wings or wings so small that they look ridiculous and campy. I need a bigger waist tutu and headpiece. And when you really start examining the look, you kind of see the bikini part is not fitting too great. And she's got her drag tights and shapewear that are awkwardly exposed, creating weird visual lines on like the side of her body where I think more material could have covered. This snowflake was unique, just not hot enough to melt. So I'd give this like a two flame soft rock. And next up, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. 
Another queen this episode who's been working on applying judges' critiques on her drag and tonight really at a high point for me. Her Searcher Engines look is a true departure from RuPaul's racing outfit and she's giving us this pastel color block 60s Valley of the Dolls meets Mario Kart Rainbow Road where Farrah Fawcett or Cindy Crawford is driving the cart fantasy. And wow, 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 I love that hair on her. It looks great. Plus the makeup. Elevated, draggy, she's giving us drag. My one critique about this look is the boots. And I understand she probably is going for that 60s white go-go boot style reference there, but I just wish there had been a partial boot cover just to bring them into the theme of this brief. But that's a small critique for this fully loaded <sighs> look. Her favorite ball look though, which is an homage to the back ball. <laughs> she's giving us a classic farm girl milkmaid fantasy with an outfit made of canvas bags. A material she chose, it seems, because it was easy to actually construct a garment out of. And I'll say this look certainly is interesting, and I don't think we've ever seen anything like this before. Definitely not. She's carrying two bags, which would be like milk buckets on a stick behind her. She's got the pigtails, the Ren Faire peasant top, and a layered skirt of bags. What more could you want? This is an ugly look, but like intentionally so? It looks like a stage costume and is missing some kind of signature Marsha personality. But in all of that ugliness, she has found, I think, a bit of camp, which is again, interesting at least. And technically speaking, the garment is well tailored. So this is really just my personal taste not agreeing with hers. So I'll leave this look at a warming up. However, I met Marsha happily in the middle for her crystallized eleganza look. Cause girl, if it's Baroque, wear it on the RuPaul's Drag Race runway. She's giving us a little Marie Antoinette working the night shift at the saloon fantasy and yet another monochromatic color palette. And this look is just beautifully tailored, fitting her body and is really fun on the runway. I do think though she could have pushed the envelope a little further on crystallized and really given us some jewels. But Marsha is serving cake and I'll have a slice. This look is hot. Next up, Selena Estella. <laughs> Who in her starter engines look is giving us this color blocks, baby blue and black jumpsuit slash tracksuit, which has style elements that do, yes, lean into car mechanic vibes. And also my first thought when I saw this look was Missy Elliott. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Is your Her hair is amazing. I love that it matches the look. This look is hot. But for her favorite ball look, she did an homage to the money ball. And yes, I was happy to see someone doing something different from the ball ball and the bag ball, which everyone else did. But this is one of those times that I'm looking at Selena on the runway and wondering how the hell we got here. First though, let's talk about what I like about this look. The movement, the contrast of the colors, and of course the flammability so she can burn it later. And Michelle's right, Selena does often come, I think, close really, really close to hitting the nail on the head as it were, but often finds herself just a couple dollars short. For some reason tonight, she has created not just a garment out of money, but is also a palm tree, which I don't know, I suppose has something to do with her being from California, but like, girl, it's a lot. Like, what is this? This look for me is gonna be a but that's just my two cents. And again, for her final look, crystallized eleganza, she comes close, but just not close enough. It's very duvet cover, isn't it? Very duvet cover in like the Queen of England's palace. And stylistically, I would say this really isn't that bad, but she was going for red carpet award show glam and I think just didn't hit that. It's just that for all of the structure that was apparently built into this dress with that pineapple pattern, there wasn't enough where it mattered like at the top so it's like falling off of her and looks frumpy. And then at the bottom, it's just too short. Maybe some straps could have helped? I don't know. I may not be a seamstress and I may not be a lip syncer and I may not even be what most people consider a drag queen. Anyways, this look is a and next up, another queen in Safeville tonight. We've got Malaysia Baby Doll Fox, who in her Starcher Engines look is giving us correct hair and makeup. An overall light pink or white, whatever color that is, polished Barbie perfection, crossed with Judy Jetson Hooker, that is. And I'll say this outfit fits her flawlessly, and I love the silhouette that she's created, but there's something about it overall that just feels a little unfinished. Like she has these patches and applique on the top part of the look, but not on the rest, and it just looks really plain down there. But because she looks so polished, I'm gonna give her a hot. But for her favorite ball, wow. 
She did an homage to the hairball and this look is a wow. My brain didn't even register when she first came out on the runway that she was doing the hairball. I'm like, black and white, what is that? Then I realized that everything she's wearing was made of hair. She got this like white and black zebra patterned poncho with sequins and then this tight, structured black braided corset with these white extensions coming down the bottom of it giving it flowy movement and she has perfectly matched all of this to the wig she's wearing that giant beehive wow and for the five hairs on my chinny chin chin i'll give this look five hot flames but for her crystallized look we do have a little bit of a regression for me to her credit though she does say this is like the second look she has ever sewn but her weakness in garment creation shows here a little bit more i think than it did in the prior challenge the top part for me is really busy and it looks looks like actually heavy and kind of weighing down the fabric in the top, which gives it that bunched up feeling above the belt. And then, and this was strange for Malaysia, the hair wasn't live laugh loving for me. The victory rolls in the front were gorgeous and perfect, but then you could see in the back it was kind of fraying and fizzling out. And for the overall brief of Eleganza, this just didn't teleport me to Mars. I'd give this look like a like a really soft, soft, soft two flame rod. And next up, y'all remember Jinx's perfume, delusion, convince yourself? Well, I think Lucy's been huffing it. I'm teasing, but also not like the desperation of Lucy Luduka wanting to win a challenge <laughs> and telling everyone that she deserves top placements and challenge wins and yada 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 has been going on for a couple weeks now and continues into this episode in The Untucked. I'm like, girl, take a breath. The producers can smell what's going on and they are... They're gonna use and abuse that. Anyways, concerning this ball, Lucy says that she's been waiting for this challenge since she got there because she loves to sew her own costumes. When I saw her first look, I got excited. She was off to a great start. She says she's giving Barbie on wheels meets Princess Peach meets Female Speed Racer, the cartoon from like the 50s or 60s. And I'm also seeing like a little bit of Betty Spaghetti or something with that neon yellow hair. I'm getting those campy late 90s vibes here. And I love, 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 love that she didn't leave the boots unfinished, something a lot of the queens did for these looks. Come on, Barbie, let's go party, because this look is hot. But her second look, an homage to the bag ball? This was so, I would say, out of character for Lucy. Like, she usually is very polished and put together on the runway with clear concepts and an idea of what she looks like. But not only is this look visually confusing, but this look was a midsummer's nightmare. She, like Marsha tonight, went for that Ren Faire peasant top vibe, complete with a doggy bag flower crown and then scrunched up doggy bags randomly placed, glued, sewn, I don't know, on the bottom part of her dress skirt. And hell, I guess Miss Fierce Alicious walked so she could also walk. I just don't understand how she looked at this and thought, yeah, this reads bag ball and also is giving a clear concept or sense of taste or fashion. But hey, look who's talking. Party City Halloween costume, Bussy Queen. Lucy, you've got some scooping to do. This looks a rat. Also a compliment though I'll give her, she looks really pretty in the makeup department here. Kind of giving me like Cameron Michaels in that hair too. Anyways, for her crystallized eleganza look, she's giving us runner up at the garlic pageant, I think she said, in this camp interpretation of, oh, I didn't win and I'm runner up and I'm, you know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride type of idea. And what I really loved about this look was she brought an extra layer, a clear concept to the idea of crystallized eleganza and presented it in a fun way. I also like that in this throwback episode, it reminds me of Trixie and Pearl's little like prom queen look. But I'll say this look was better conceptually and from a distance than it was close up. Devil's in the details and some of the details just weren't totally finessed. Like Carson pointed out, the mermaid skirt needed to be dropped down a bit and I don't think she amped up the idea of being crystallized enough. It was like she was bottling up all the frustration that she's had for not winning some of these challenges and then channeled it all into her drag but got tunnel vision and kind of lost sight of the bigger eleganza brief. And the flower bouquet is weird, like it's mostly distracting and ugly. It looks just like a roll of aluminum foil. So I'll leave this look at a warming Next up, the legend herself, Sasha Colby, who says she's not really a seamstress, but manages to turn it out. Her first look, start your engines, I was breathless. And like, she not only started my engine, but it started to overheat. And this look is an interpretation of Rue's pink racing suit, then in this flavor of casual yet hyper glamorous red carpet ready look. My only question is, does she have a license to look this beautiful? Because this look is hot. And for her favorite ball look, she does an homage to the ball bag. 
why did everyone pick this? And the type of bag she chooses to dress as is a dime bag, which is a type of bag that carries a certain type of substance you can purchase, not for a dime, but I think for a 10. And what I love most about this look is how campy it is. It's ridiculous. Like Laganja would be so proud because girl, if it ain't green, mom, I'm not interested. But this is a really great sweet spot for Sasha to be in because she is maintaining that beauty and glamour, but also showing a really fun personality side covered in all these green leaves of a certain substance. This looks clever, interesting, and most importantly, exciting for the runway and burning hot. And her final look, no surprise, also wows in the beauty department. She says she's giving us golden coral goddess emerging from the lava of Hawaii. And I wouldn't say that's what I got when I saw the look, but I loved it anyways. It was giving me like 90s classic Vegas glamour vibes, like very showgirls and Versace. And it's really awesome, I think, that she finessed this category so well, considering that when you break down the pieces of how she constructed it, it's relatively simple. There's a dress skirt with a long train, a beautiful shiny tiny top piece that looks really regal and kind of like armor and some wiry pieces coming off of her arms. My only thing for this look is, well, it is beautiful and she is breathtaking. It's not necessarily a look that I think I'll look back on in several years and be like, remember that awesome look that Sasha made? I'll just remember that she looked beautiful across the three categories. But yeah, this look was simple, effective, and hot. And finally, Ruse apparently moved on from coffee enemas and is on to Anitra, whatever that is. Anitra's first look for Star Trek Engines immediately, to me, was giving Chigo from Kim Possible. And I like that she was unique in her color interpretation for the racing suit, but kept the casual and sexy vibes of the original reference look with like the sheerness of the fabric she used. Plus, I loved hearing about the patches on her arms. So the flags of her heritage on one side representing her mom, the other her dad. And she's got German, Puerto Rican, Filipino, Pino, Japanese. I mean, she is a woman of the world. And to a nature, I pledge allegiance. This look is hot. But for her second look, an homage to the sugar ball, girl. What the hell happened here? This was another situation tonight on the runway, like when I looked at Lucy's second look where I was just like, there's no way this is real, right? And it was? This is a no. Like for the category, she does have some candy pieces that are very obvious in her look, like those little candy pieces on the strips that are around her waist. And she's got what is allegedly, I guess, like a taffy cone bra situation happening on the top, some suckers that apparently got stuck in her cotton candy hair. And this was a very strange, cohesively speaking, look for me because it's lacking in attention to detail, cohesive story, or like vision for what she really wanted to accomplish. I felt like she put this together in the workroom like 10 minutes before she hit the runway. I wish this look were sickeningly sweet, but it's just making me sick. It's a wrap. And this look was all the more unforgivable when we see how amazing she looks in her crystallized eleganza look. Like, are you effing joking? Are you kidding? For as bad as that second look was, this one is as good. She asked for the crystallized brief, put jewels that look like vertebra down the back of her dress and like spikes on her shoulders and down the sides of her arms. I love this look is very drag and as RuPaul also pointed out, McQueen. It immediately reminded me of Lady Gaga from the Bad Romance music video where she has those like vertebra prosthetic sticking out in her back. And when she was working directly with Alexander McQueen to create a lot of her looks like the gold one in that same video. But yeah, I was so gagged. I can't say enough nice things about this look, that layered, beautiful trumpet skirt, the way it moves, the way it flows, the jaggedness with the smoothness and the shine. Like, this is a chef's kiss of a runway. It's hot. Which brings us into placements for the episode. The judges' favorites tonight seem to be Anitra, Mistress, and Sasha Colby. Appropriately so. And ultimately, they decided to give the win to Sasha, but this gagged me a little bit because let's look at the scorecard that I made for each of the three looks for the queens. I think Sasha did a phenomenal job in this ball. Each look was good. She was consistent. She had clear concepts, good references, and girl, she gave eleganza and beauty better than the best of them. But while I can appreciate the consistency and beauty in everything she did, I only gave each look like four hot flames because they were missing that certain element of wow and like TV memorability. Those are really the two factors I consider when giving out like a full five hot flame score. So she got 12 points from me and Mistress actually got 14 and a half points from me. I thought her favorite ball and crystal ball look were absolutely top 
tier flawless victories of drag. And she was consistent, clear, and interesting in all of her looks tonight. So personally, I would have given Mistress the win. But y'all did hear me gush about Anitra's crystallized look. Like if the ball were going to be decided just based on one look, I would give it to Anitra, of course. But it's not. It's based on the three looks, the two they brought and the one they made. And that second one was just unforgivable, but certainly not bad enough to put her in the bottom or anything. She was just like safe for me. To be clear though, I don't want to take away any credit from Sasha's win. She deserves it. This is just a matter of subjective personal taste. And I'd love to know who y'all thought deserved the win in the comments below. Lucy Laduca, anyone? <laughs> she is going to kill me. But even more confusing for me tonight than who they gave the win to was the bottom two. Because my scorecard shows three queens with nine points across their three looks, who are Lux, Selena, and Lucy. And in fact, Spice has two more points than these three queens with nine in my chart, which would have made her like high safe for me. But the judges put her in the bottom with Selena. And the guys you think to me here was like, no matter how you slice the judging of these three looks, equally weighted heavier for the design challenge, whatever, I think Spice just absolutely didn't deserve bottom two. But from a production standpoint, and I kind of hinted at this earlier, it feels like at this point in the competition, they don't really know what to do with Spice anymore. Like she's there and doing a good job, but they know at this point that she's not done great in the comedy or acting or lip sync challenges. She's just kind of in there. So to me here, it looks like the producers are producing and really trying to whittle down the cast to the ones with the most diverse set of talents. And these two, Spice and Selena, have already been in the bottom. So it kind of feels like their stories are naturally coming to a close here is like at episode nine if you're not bringing the drama the comedy challenge wins the super memorable confessional quotes or whatever you're probably being looked at as a potential to go home like nikki said if you ain't then get off the pot anyways though concerning that lip sync it did concern me and uh, you can watch it concern me over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where I post exclusive content and give my patron family who helps support my channel and keeps the lights on around here special benefits like access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, early access to my YouTube videos and more. And you can join my patrons by clicking the link in the description of this video. But my right hand in the air, honest to God thoughts are probably should have been a double sachet. I didn't love either Queen's performance. Spice looked a little annoying annoyed and just totally over it. Like you could tell in her face, she knew she was going home. She knew what was up. I think from the second that Rue and Carson came into the workroom and started giving her these weird critiques and suggestions. And Selena didn't give a great performance for me either because it read that she was just so upset to be there at all that she couldn't focus on delivering the lip sync properly. Like half the time it was kind of as if she was just walking around the stage confused. But this is a great time to bring up that it's a TV show and it's totally okay for everyone to share their opinions about it. Drag Race is literally made for our consumption and entertainment. However, the people on the show are real, and generally speaking, your thoughts about these people don't need to go to their inbox or to their comment sections. Instead, I would invite you to keep your thoughts and opinions in the comment sections of YouTube videos like mine. Because too often we see these queens getting vitriol from the fan base that, by the way, nobody deserves for the sole reason that, like, they sent one of their favorite queens home. Selena tweeted this out when the episode aired. Please don't send me threats. Or if you feel the need to share with me that I should have went home instead, please express your feelings without tagging me. I love my spicy so much too. Trust me, I get it. Hashtag drag race. And Spice quote tweeted that writing, love you Selena. Everyone sent her all the love. She's an angel. Be mad at the producers, not her. She has no control over who goes home. T. And Spice apparently agrees. She thought she did well. This is what she tweeted out the night of the episode. Not them putting me in the bottom a week I actually did well and then sent me home on my best lip sync. The math isn't mathing. She also quote tweeted this gif where somebody wrote Michelle Visage every time Spice breathes, writing, I get her so bothered just by looking hot and being fun. I love it. And also side note, I'm also curious what Sugar was talking about because she quote tweeted this same tweet and wrote, well, if only y'all knew what she was telling her makeup artist about us on set every day. Sugar, we would like to know. Anyways, yes, Spice seasoned her last episode of Drag Race and sashayed away to her home. Home, the place where you can get prep delivered free and discreetly to your door with today's video sponsor, Mister. Use the link in the description of my video to learn more. And finally, let's talk hottest hots. For the starter engines category, I'm gonna give it to Spice. In the my favorite ball category, Mistress Isabel Brooks. And for crystallized eleganza, 
Anitra. I also asked my patrons to vote on their favorite looks for the ball and for those three respective categories they've chosen. Sasha Colby, Sasha Colby, and Anitra. But let me know what y'all thought down below. And finally, I want to say thanks again to today's video sponsor, Mr. Who can help you get free prep delivered to your door. And I want to give an extra special thanks to all my channel members in the House of Transport. You too can become a channel member and financially support the Bussy Queen YouTube channel to help keep the lights on, pay for editors, and buy costumes by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. You'll get these cute little flame icons next to your name and at the bus driver tier, you can even get your name in the description of my videos. And I wanna give a special shout out to Lychee, who's just joined my Patreon at the highest tier. And Ashley Brungart, Daniel Sendez, Fat Leisha, Hector C. Mangas, Jeffrey Kyle, Laura Lissette, Louis Labrador, <laughs> Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matto, Panda Kitty, Sailor, Sexy Winnie the Blue, Steven Topher, Tyler Hendricks, MD, Billy, <laughs> and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier over at patreon.com slash Queen. See you later. Love ya. Bye.